All right, everybody, we are going to get started. Um, so greetings. I am Johanna Tesfai, and I am the Public Programs Manager of SAMA. I want to welcome everyone as well as thank you all for choosing to gather with us for this evening of poetry. Um, tonight we will have five poets respond to select works of art from the Texas Women, A New History of Abstract Art Exhibition. It's currently on view and it will close on September 9th. So if you haven't seen it, please check it out. But if you have, check it out again because it's um, you find something new every time uh, you go into the space. Um, I know that I do. Um, Okay, and perfect. So now that we've gotten there, I will introduce our first poet. Let's see the screen. Perfect. So Dulcie David Velatu Karan is a writer, educator, and proud dog person. Dulcie first arrived on the slam scene in 2005 and has tinkered with spoken word intermittently since. Um, since. She has been on Team Bala Bajumba in 2006 and 2007 and Houston VIP for 2014 through 2016. She has also worked as adult and youth poetry slam teams in a coaching capacity. Dulce is the facilitator of the first school district-based educator writing cohort right beside us and is currently a curriculum specialist located in Houston, Texas. She will be responding to these two works of art, one by Catherine Lee and the other by um, Terrell James. And let me stop sharing my screen so that you will be able to see her. And remember, speaker view. Okay, I hope that everyone can see me. Uh, Johanna, you might have to help me with that. Can everyone see me? Yes. I yes. Okay. So I am going to respond to The Game by um, Terrell Lee, which is the painting that's behind me right now. So Terrell um, James, sorry, said, as you develop as an artist, you kind of get further and further on a path that if you're lucky is your own language. It's kind of like finding your voice as a poet, which I thought was just really a fantastic way to look at art in general. So the piece, the game is, um, it's abstract. It's absolutely wonderful. And the first thing that I, I, I saw in this was sort of the way that the gray kind of takes over in the picture, which is interesting for the times that we live in, isn't it? Because the world is just kind of gray and we're in a place where we're really not certain about things. And we have to kind of embrace cert uncertainty at this point um, in time. So that's what my poem is about. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read you the first poem. It's called All Hail the Gray. All hail the gray that seeps into the mornings, the fog that settles in the hedge, the clouds pregnant with rain, the remains of coal in the backyard smoker. The days were green before the masks and countless deaths and the unwelcome guest of disease that stripped us of routine. The black and white of calendar days, wake up, get dressed, repeat, refresh. Unclench your fist from around your life, Come from within your blackest howl and embrace uncertainty as she sits inside your house at your kitchen table with a knife, calmly peeling a bruised plum. All hail the gray and the grace it brings. All hail the gray and the unknown. All hail the miracles we can't predict. The tiny seedlings of faith sprouting inside the hardest of hearts. All hail the gray, the unresolved, the world that hangs in the balance. When the specter of doubt sits in the chest and covers the blues and pinks we once loved. Now we, are now we wear transients like a second skin. We watch the dusk stitch itself into the sky. We pick apart old scars and watch them heal again. We wipe clean the slate and mourn. It is summer and the flamingos come to dip their beaks in the mess we have made. It is summer and our children make cardboard crowds for our unworthy heads. All hail not knowing, all hail the imperfection of this moment. All hail the rhymes that never sat neatly in the mouth, the scars across the belly, the wrinkles around the heart, all hail. 
And that's that. Peace. Yay. <laughs> okay, I am going to switch over to this piece, which was my second piece by Catherine Lee, Chocolate Cadmium. Um, very interesting. Chocolate is delicious and cadmium is not. Um, so something that I discovered about cadmium is that if you inhale it, it leads to, and I'm just going to read it, uh, respiratory tract and kidney problems, which can be fatal. Um, ingestion of any significant amounts of cadmium causes immediate poisoning and damage to the liver and kidneys. And it reminded me of my marriage, which was chocolate and cadmium at the same time. Um, so I wrote a poem about my marriage and I wrote a poem about um, domestic abuse and how it sometimes feels like you're kind of stuck in these little squares, which is, you know, what I saw when I looked at the piece. So this is... Um, a poem about that. Under the shingled roof is a reckoning, the smell of rain before the heavens open, the slurry of words before the closed fist. My husband's thumb is a terracotta roof. It blocks out the sun. The apologies packaged neatly like squares of chocolate in a tissued box. Eat them, he says, and knives fall out of his mouth. Cadmium glazed eyes stare and I never meek, never mild. Now a lamb fed sugar cubes before the butcher slits its throat. A hundred little scabs cover pinked flesh. A hundred closed off mazes poured over with bloody cement. Overhead the houses packed neatly in blocks. In which one does a woman feel the lifelines guillotine and neatly slice through her waiting throat? A hundred red pickup trucks, none a getaway car. A hundred suitcases packed and unpacked. A hundred bruises bloom and wilt. A hundred pieces of toast and strawberry jam chewed against the blackened jaw. A hundred times the dice have rolled. A hundred times I have whispered to myself, get out, get out, get out. Rose water and pomegranate Turkish delight. Red velvet petty fours arranged and rearranged in the display. I am nothing if not the same woman with different scars every day origami caskets of regret, rubbed out pencil erasers, a nub of what I once was. And how many of us will lie neatly in the gray, row upon row, snug under the coffin lid, blot by blot, each of us different, each of us the same, each of us cadmium, each of us chocolate. That's that. That was really incredible. I mean, we can all unmute ourselves and just kind of give a nice little applause because that was. Um, awesome. Wow. All right. So now we can mute ourselves one more time. And I'm going to share my screen for our next poet. All right. Let me fix this. All right, okay. So a poet and organizer from Austin, Texas, Sunny Soper finds herself using her words to open minds and create spaces for creativity and hope. She has served in numerous leadership capacities such as organizing the 2016 Eve Ensler's The Vagina Monologues, which raised money for Safe Place in Austin. She has also served as the VP of Neo Soul Poetry Lounge and as a and as a board member of Austin Poetry Slam. Uh, Sunny is currently editor and media director for poetry publishing company 310 Brown Street and was a previous voting member of the Recording Academy as a recording artist songwriter. Um, let, let up for Sunny and let me unshare. Um, okay. All right, and Sunny, are you there? I am here. Perfect. Um, so yeah, please begin. Oh, can you see me? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so this is uh, Marceline McNeil's ramp number one, uh, painting number one. Open letter to guessoed backgrounds. When I first look at this painting, I feel safe. 
served, guarded, proletariat, progeny protected by purple poise, a blockade from the blight of humanity, a shroud of royal grace. And then I remove my white privilege colored lenses. Like lasers removing cataracts, the image is transformed. Marceline McNeil uses chance, gravity, and viscosity of the paint to create this work. Centuries of chance meetings turning to brutality created blood thick enough the viscosity is turned blue, uniforms purple. The gravity of this suffocates spirits left in their wake, a list of names so devastatingly long the hashtags fade into a sea of gray. Gessoed backgrounds with thin paints create the faded edges of our whitewashed history, leaving us only a faded representation of Black voices. Their voices barely breaking through the white noise gessoed on the background of this country's foundation. The name of this painting is Ramp Painting Number One. The police force in the South was initially established to track down escaped enslaved. Soon after, the enslaved were technically freed, but this ramped up to the Black Codes and Jim Crow, now into incarceration disparity. Reckless state-sanctioned assassinations of American citizens by an over-militarized, undertrained few rooted in a lust for power. This may sound anti-police, but it's not. It's anti-police brutality. Consider the way Marceline McNeil uses her spatial awareness and creates spaces for Black voices. Be aware. Listen. Be open. Do your own research. Learn. Confront your inherent bias, challenge your cognitive dissonance, know you are climbing a ramp, know you will lose your footing, know you have to keep going, the people you're fighting for may not always be nice to you, know you have to keep going, if they have to be nice to you for you to fight for them, you aren't there for them in the first place. There is a grace to the way McNeil lets shapes and colors unfold. Allow yourself grace to unfold into your future shape. Know you will still have creases. Work to iron them. Celebrate culture. Culture is the earth's palette. See color. You cannot have art without every pigment's gradient fading into focus. McNeil's architectural studies are evidence of the importance of structural integrity to art. Reinforce the structural integrity of the Black community. Support Black businesses. People I love are Black. People I haven't even gotten to meet yet will be Black. I worry when they're home. I worry when they're not home. They are not safe. Help me make them safe. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. So that was poem number one. <laughs> Trying to change the uh, background to the other painting there. Okay. All right. So the next painting is Dana Frankfurt Kiss. He kissed me, passionate, messy, blinding, forceful, he meant it. Dana Frankfort creates lay layers of paint by scraping and sanding, leaving a distressed surface that bears its own history. His kiss scraped and sanded my layers of protection down to my distressed surface, and he started writing my new story. A combination of matte and high gloss finishes create the landscape for changes to come. I was blinded to his true nature, hidden under layers of varnish. He kissed me better. He kissed away my pain, and then he gave it back to me. He questioned me. He accused me. I told him he hurt my feelings. He told my feelings they were lies. He refused to kiss me. I edited myself, just hoping for a kiss. No matter how much of myself I removed, I still wasn't worthy of his kiss. I was blind to the fact that I never would be. I was punished. I still don't know why his reasons were whispers carried off by the wind, unintelligible like tree limbs on a window in a storm, scratched out graffiti. He tried to erase me. He sculpted and chiseled as if my landscape needed reshaping too, as if my topography needed editing too. It was passionate, blind, messy, forceful, chaotic, physical, violent. He meant it. He said he loved me. He said he wouldn't do it again. And then he took a baseball bat to my temple. He tried to destroy my artifact. He tried to scratch out my existence. He wanted to kiss me goodbye. He did it again, bruised and battered, sealed with a kiss. Everyone, please, you know, I know. Ooh. 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 
Okay, so um, our next poet, let me share my screen again. Okay. Our next poet, um, Her Imperial Highness, heir apparent to the royal warrior nation of Kombatai, Amina is trained at the World Combat Academy, Institute of Martial Science, and holds degrees of fine arts and art history criticism from the University of Texas San Antonio. Under the pseudonym P16, she began her artistic journey as a slam poet in Colleen, Texas. Amina discredits the concept of white supremacy through a variety of media and performance. She currently teaches the arts at Kirby Middle School, influencing capable young people by blending their academic, social, emotional, and self-controlled traits to assist them in mastering the de developmental tasks necessary to enjoy a satisfying and productive life. Amina also leads Progress Studios and collaborates with local artists and organizations to create happenings in the community. And so she will be um, responding to Liz Ward's Ghost of the Old Mississippi and Annette Lawrence's works. So let me unshare my screen. All right, everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here. A lot of my family is on the chat, and I appreciate you all taking time to, do, to, to check me out here. Um, this first work, oh, hold on, I'm having some feedback issues. Um, this first work was super important to me because I am actually from Mississippi. And so this work being about the Mississippi River and how it's changed over the course of time, um, whether it was natural changes to the river or man-made changes to it, um, really sat with me. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to reach out to my family for inspiration for this piece. So this poem is called, When a Village Writes a Poem. We've come a long way since Crusoe Street. Fayard Street, Omega Street, before the streets. When our country was dust, a powder we forged into our image. Needles leaving remnants of pine on our kisses. Our tears are in this ocean, we sang them. Before beacons of bewitching lights and slot machines, we whistled them an absolvent hum rousing fish, crawfish, shrimp into our bellies. Mmm, skillet cornbread and fresh cut seasonings into our bellies. This is how mother feeds us with her fingertips. We are addicted to this touch, that taste, before it was an industry, before it was profit. Clark, Lewis, we saw them. Pierre and Jean Baptiste, Lost in our bays, our bayous, taking refuge in our wombs, sinuously displacing our children, refugees like Katrina. In all ways we moored before her. Our trails we've walked or did not walk while they thefted our names and called us nigger. Banned us from our beaches where we saluted the sun since time immemorial. If memory is medicine, I recall a scent of dusty ass crown royale bags and coins, a cascade of smoky leaves carrying our laughter to the ether. Coops, chicken coops, crawling for breakfast, the earth beneath my stride and honey in my eyes, lazy summers at Grandma Juicy's house. Juicy because that's her business and she can do that if she wants to. Cause I'm sure she made decisions to guarantee my existence and so shall I after me and mine. As long as the creek don't rise, as long as the creek don't rise, 
Ajuba to all of my departed ancestors, whose names I know and do not know, but whose blood still courses through my veins. All right. Yeah, that's the first Say one. that, my baby. Say that. Um, the second uh, one. Right. Um, oh this piece. Amazing. I I'm related to her. It's <laughs> abstract. It's super numerical and mathematical, which is a little bit outside of my realm. So it was a challenge for me to write this next piece. Um, and But I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. I try to avoid the news. I've been skeptical since choir, eighth grade, middle school. Ms. Donahue taught us to enunciate, hum with clarity, precision. Soft T's are sweet, she said. And hard R's are harsh like liars, like politicians on the news. Beauty, we sang, is fragile, fine and fleeting like breath. A gift we gamble and from the rises, fall left, third roll alto, look. Dice rolling on the screen. Media's falling from the heights of each scene to pavement, bloody. Every payment claimed a soul and passports paper persisted through flames that melted airplanes, a miracle. Anchors fastening lies to our psyche, but we were singing. Jaws poised for soft teas, and every channel debriefing. The fatalities were more than we expected, are more than we expected. More lynchings than expected, bullets than expected, confirmed cases than expected, more chaos than expected. And who is body counting the debt? Who secures the transactions? Who predetermines obligations for violating our laws, like insurance, stocks, and bonds? There's always been a bounty over our voices. Our silence is paid for with interest. Oh, the constellations these crimes must create in the heavens. See how we shine as diamonds, glisten as oil, purify like springs, sacred, a seriation of soft Tees to be serrated for the seer, who divines and soothes the masses with trinkets and equations, symbols and mystery, a balancing act of harsh R's. But beauty is fragile, like breath, so rare and so fine, so quickly it is gone. But smile then when you see it come flutter by. But too soon, it will be moving on. Thank you. Yes, that was amazing. Oh, was gorgeous. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that super awesome. late. The painting. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes. All right, folks. I am going to mute everyone again. Or if you please. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Before you do that. Yes. The next poet, it is her birthday. And so we must stop and sing her happy birthday <laughs> before she performs. Yeah. It's a nail, okay? So uh, we're gonna on account of three, we're gonna sing happy birthday to Miss Anel. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. so much i'm trying not to cry before i get here <laughs> thank you thank you so much i appreciate you all right everyone if everyone can mute themselves and let me share my screen so we can all right let me get my bio together so happy birthday anel 
Um, Anel Flores is a lesbiana, queer, author, and activist, creating work as a continuation and evolution of the conversation started by the Chicana, Chicon X movement in art and literature, now infused by Latinx, trans feminism, intersectionality, queer politics, and resistance. So um, welcome, Anel. And she's responding to Susie Rosemary's number 49. Okay. Thank you so much, Johanna. Thank you, Andrea, Vocab, Sanderson, and all the poets, writers, and all of you guests for being here. Um, I saw the art and I was like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> uh, not because it's not brilliant. It is what I can't, it's the, it's the type of art that really amazes me. Um, I'm a narrative uh, artist. I am a storyteller and I write, I draw trees and and breasts and bodies and blood, um, I don't draw lines. So when I saw the work, I was stunned. Uh, and I just, then I started actually just listening to the artist herself and the work that she does and, and the craft. And, um, and really I, I appreciated her. And then I just stepped away, took a few days off from every, all the research I tried to do. And I just focused on the line. I focused on lines. I focused on the continuation of lines and how lines have hurt and harmed and punished and, and um, trapped us and how lines are also infinite and how lines run through rivers and how lines run through our blood, um, our bodies. Uh, and then I, I wrote this piece and it is one long piece, which is why there's only one uh, painting. So here we go. You drew the lines. After the entrada, after the ships, after the massacres, after the letters, after the loitering, after the loathing, after the beheading, after the stealing, after the poisoning of medicine, of practice, of ceremony, of skins and nails and teeth and hair and hides and stories and language and song and dance, you drew the lines. After the invasion, you buried our gods, tumbled our tombs, unearthed our pottery, ripped our jewels from our red clay flesh. After you drank our blood and raped our babies, abuelas, mommies, tongue. You drew the lines after you wrote your letters of lies, of discoveries, of savages, of pagans, of feathered serpents, of moons and bells and fires, what you called blasphemy. You wrote on a line in a language that was not ours, wrote lines upon lines, red lines, scribbled lines, crossed lines, between lines, under the lines, to make a line between land that was and still is ours, saying this is there and this is here and that is there and nowhere is our place because your line, your crime, cut a line across our skins, cut across our kin. You thought you could leave us out to die. You thought you would win with your lines of fire. You drew the line after you took our thousand languages, forbade us to speak in our own lines, our numbers, our pictures, our practice. You tried to make them yours tried to unearth our minds, tried, 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 time and time again, you tried to unearth our minds. Today, you make us wait along the line of the river, along the lines of steel bars, lines of Walmarts, lines of checks cash, lines of rafts and river tube rentals, paddle boards, beer floats. All the while in lines, people wait in a hundred degrees against the line you drew, against the lines, lines of fences crisscrossed in a mess of barbed wire, no math, no pattern, no connections to anything, no prayer. And today, and today, and today we accept your lines are a lie. And we open up on the other side of your line, bursting through wells of wishes, breaking cement walls with kisses, leaving shoes lost on our journey, running along the lines of legs, of bones, of calves, of toes, of knees, carrying babies, running across the lines of blood, of tears. You made us cry, of lives you tried to break our mind. Block us, 
with a line. You tried, you tried, you tried, and then, and then you came again for our mother, our line of water, our land of rain, of trees, of current, to ba adi, woman, river. You came for us, raging, washing, waning, water, la brava, eye, agua. You came for us without knowing we are our own line. We are our own line. We are our own line. We are the Rio Topa Adi, woman, river, Rio Grande, Rio Bravo, Rio of medicine, Rio of sky, Awa of life, of survival, of escape. You drew the lines, ripped at our arms, poked at our glistening eyes, called us furious, ferocious, agitated, polluted, dirty, bloody, dangerous, trash. But you didn't know we are the river. We are our line of water, of blood. La brava, eye, agua. We are our rio. Toba adi, woman, river, raging, washing, waning water, furious, ferocious, and agitated. And you didn't know that, that we are water. That we are water lines along all sides, dripping and breaking, escaping and cutting and multiplying, furious, ferocious, and agitated. We are lines of water before the eyes of sky, our almighty sky of light and sun and moon, universo, madre, moon. You didn't know we are our winding lines of river, washing, ringing, raging. We are brave lines. Branches of vines, ringlets of floating flowers. We are furious. We are agitated lines. We are ferocious lines. We are the river. We are our line. La brava, eye, agua. We are rio, toba, adi, woman, river. We are lifeline. We are river, carrying the enslaved to escape, going south to freedom. And we are lifeline. We are river, carrying the enslaved to escape, going north for freedom. Today, we cut into your broken line with our mighty water, Awa River, Ravine. And you didn't know our mouth spilled out bigger than you'd ever seen. A mouth, a gulfo, laguna, sea, ocean, waters, trees, magical beings adorned with gills and wings and seeds. Us, we are water weaving and waving to the stars. And you didn't know because you don't have the eyes to see. You didn't know our mouth spilled out bigger than you'd ever seen. A mouth who can breathe underwater and across the sea. A water creature who can breathe in the open air. And you didn't know the line you drew across our wet, soaking, submerged, shimmering, soaring body of Rio. You didn't know our lines don't cross, don't break, don't end, don't close, don't stop, don't fade. You didn't know we are our line, as a line is to be, infinite in direction, infinite in space, infinite in length. We are lines of whole civilizations drawn in sand. You can't brush off. We are lines carved in stone older than you could ever know. We are lines of smoke rising from the ashes of your fire, like lines across crystals, like lines never the same, like lines wrapped around malachite in constant rings, like lines cut through rose quartz, like lines of lightning. We are lines of tunnels underground. We built the lines, like the lines of our antenna in our hair, and lines of digging hands cracked with lines of years and and work through dirt to free ourselves from your lines. We are the lines of grandmother's heart rate. We are the two parallel lines between her eyes. We are the lines framing our mother's smile, the lines that connect here, the lines that connect there. We are not afraid to cross your lines, asshole. They are gone. We have kicked them up from the dust. We have erased your lines with our mother line, our Rio. We are a lifeline, the woman, the love, the lover, mujer, Rio, a line growing into the tree that has lived and made love over a thousand lines if lines were only years, but they aren't. 
but we have not starved from your lines. We have grown far from blind. We have uncovered your lines and broken lines between our brows, grown laugh lines around our frown. I rise in the lines of Maya Angelou. I rise in the lines of Malinche. I rise in the lines of Ansaldua. I rise in the lines of Menchu. I rise in the lines of June. I rise in the lines of books, lines of stars and stories that don't bind. I rise in our lines. I rise in our lines of Rio, in the winding lines of river and washing and ringing and raging. We are brave lines, branches of vine, ringlets of floating flowers, furious, ferocious, and agitated. We are river. We are line of river. La brava ella agua. We are the Rio, Toba, Adi, woman, river. Say it to yourselves. You drew the lines and you must erase them yourself. While our mouths open up in oceans and seas and Golfo, Laguna, larger than you can see. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Wow. So good. Wow. 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 Damn, wow, wow, that was wow, wow. so good. Thank you. That's <laughs> prayer to our ancestors, and thank you to our ancestors and spirit guides for bringing up. Yes. Um, okay. Again, if everyone can mute themselves, and I'll share the screen for our last and final poet. Ooh, last poet, boo. So Andrea Vocab Anderson is a San Antonio native that has been performing for over twenty years. She's host of the consecutive award-winning Second Verse Open Mic. She has served as a writer and community for Gemini I Inc. since 2009. She's the winner of the 2019 People's Choice Award, awarded by Luminaria Artist Foundation, formerly known as Artist Foundation of San Antonio. Her debut book entitled She Lives in Music, published by Power Song Press, was released on Valentine's Day 2020. Her album, She Tastes Like Music, is available on all music streaming platforms. On April 1st, 2020, Andrea became the first African-American of San Antonio um, from 2020 to 2023. What's up? And and in May of 2020, she was awarded Best Life Entertainment um, Band Musician of the Year by the 17th Annual C Awards. So please, um, quick shout out to our current laureate for san antonio yay and she's responding to um tony lasalle's work and constance low so let me stop sharing boom you got greetings everyone Oh my God, y'all, we are almost to 100 people that came to sit and listen to poetry and look at beautiful art. So clap for yourselves. You're amazing. Um, it was, I feel like I'm the one that gets a treat because Johanna said, can you curate a woman's reading? And I'm like, are you kidding me? I got you. <laughs> I know some chingonas. I know some women that are fierce and bad to the bone. And I mean, their work spoke and it resonated in all of you. And I'm sure if we could just reach out and touch each other and hug and give high five, we would because y'all, y'all just blessed me. This, this past hour has been nothing but a blessing. Powerful. I want to say thank you to every artist that could make it tonight. I do see Terrell James over there. Thank you. I, I saw Kat, Catherine Lee in the room and some others. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Blessings to you. Thank you for sharing your art with us and giving us this space and this opportunity to speak to your artwork. Um, I have three pieces, so I got to get to it. The first one is, I'm, I have two pieces for one. Um, so you're getting a two for one special for Climate of the Heart, which is the uh, the art piece that's behind me, which is by Dorothy Tony LaSalle. Uh, I have two pieces for that. Um, I'm going to do a song I wrote called I Had a Dream, um, just a verse in the course of that. And then I'm going to move into the new things that I wrote. New, yeah. All right. 
I had a dream, then my heart was frozen cold, solid as an iceberg, frigid as a winter snow. Truth thawed me out, and love let me know I could share my soul if I just let go. Just let go. Calloused in my winter, every month was like December. I remember a time when I would exhaust all my means, pathway tearing at the seams, pulling at my heartstrings to frail, unraveling fibers, an outsider that wanted in. I wouldn't budge, I wouldn't bend, couldn't begin to mend these fragments or rescind this exodus and travel. Yeah, heart unravel, feet on gravel, straggling each step, couldn't catch my breath. Vapors crystallize on my chest, frost forming on my flesh, cold shoulders, cold climates. The rest of the terrain, snow cap peaks, I couldn't climb it. Weary, falling asleep, reaching the brink of rim. R-E-M, a cycle then. I felt the heat of realization rinsing me in the torrid baptism of truth, truth. Unthaw your heart, the love is inside of you. I heard a voice say, I had a dream. That my heart was frozen cold, solid as an iceberg, frigid as the winter snow. Truth thawed me out, and love let me know I could share my soul if I just let go. Just let go, just let go. So that's that piece. Um, I felt like it was so appropriate for thinking about the climate of the heart and how in this season, uh, we have to be careful to not let our heart wax cold, not let ourselves to become um, indifferent or apathetic in this season where there's so much disagreement and turmoil going on. Find a way to unthaw the chill that is tried to come and engulf us all. Um, so my second piece relating to uh, climate of the heart is called simulacrum and uh, it's a representation or an image. <clears throat> Today, my heart felt like a chrome kaleidoscope and you were there, reaching awkwardly from the past, twisting and turning my cylinders to give me a new start. A fresh paling pastel of perspective with which to view through this lens to see love more keenly. Given the terrain of my heart shape, I find it hard to adjoin myself, jagged jigsaw of sentiment to attach to that of another. Only a fraction of my emotion is tethered to the space. The rest of my passion is taking shape inside of me. The rest of my feelings are carving out space for this blue litany of distress or depressive ideology. I want to be wide open to battle off the abrasive to not buffer with indifference or apathy. I want to not brace myself for fallout shelters etched into statements. They are accompanied by blank stares and sarcasm. I want to vacuum the flat tone from my past lover's lips and numb their mouth with an icy blue igloo. I want to sanctuary my soul from their tyranny of words against me. Their passion used to sprawl out over my cheeks and kisses and lower back caresses. I was subdued in celeste and cerulean. I was stroked in sapphire and turquoise touches. My body dampened with their briny sweat a composure run awry, leaving the evidence by the blush of rose across my forehead. A flush of passion melting me into a spasm of shudders today. 
My heart felt like a spectral display of transmuted memories. Your slippery fingers were fidgeting with my chambers. I find you here, toiling against my landscape, making of me a tactile capsule toyed with infrequently and yet to your amusement. I traded off warmth and comfort for an unsettling chill and the reaping of aversion, a feud of ambivalence awaking rain. The pieces never fit perfectly before now, but they had form. I grew accustomed to symmetry. I felt the separation of parts in your silence and an aqua animosity that embittered my skin to a boiling point. I wiped the resentment from my eyes and tried not to notice the change in temperature or the moisture of the dew gathering at my calloused heels. I clothed myself in an azure blanket and decided to just heal. So there's that piece. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Switch this background, I'm right. I done done it seamlessly. Y'all don't know how um, we were all kind of stressed about the idea of trying to make sure that all of our technology was together and we could switch through all day long. We've all been freaking out about having to switch screens, making sure we had the right thing up with the right coinciding. Uh, it, was, it was the most. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to Split Shift by Constance Lowe. Shout out to Constance. Um, and this will be my closing piece. This is a rewrite of a poem. So the title of this poem used to be Yeti, like as in Bigfoot, but I'm gonna have to rename it probably. Um, so I don't have a working title for it yet because it it's a rewrite. I've never been good at walking on eggshells. In fact, I impale them with my tippy toes and leave crater-sized holes in the earth's clay skin. My trail like earthen braille, you can read the evidence of where I've been. These wide with planters touch down and retreat the ground with heavy clops like the startling sound of raindrops in a Mumbai monsoon or a clumsy cyclops stumbling through an unlit room. I make movement monumentally. Circumference and melody create a cacophony at my Achilles as I kick up dust. I shift uncomfortably. Like tectonic plates in an earthquake, I shift. Uncomfortably like a teen in her first pair of heels, I shift. Uncomfortably like paradigms and gender roles, trying to avoid a new and unabridged personification of my soul because I am not an angry Black woman. Quarrelsome and demonstrative, the strife of my life doesn't define the diameter lines written across my skin. I am an oddity, a commodity by my own standards, but my body is not for sale. I treasure my curves, nooks, crannies, crevices, and ellipses. My femininity is draped on a full-figured frame, juicy and fat, feral and untamed. So liken me to Queen Latifah and Oprah if you wish, and I will haunt you like the eyes of Sojourner Truth and the voice of Mahalia Jackson. Say my speech is striking as Zora Neale Hurston and Barbara Jordan. Call me outspoken like Fannie Lou Hamer and Angela Davis, or just cower like crumpled paper in fear of my big old black. Blackness. Either way, I will not suppress my inner strength, nor cover these tracks, for they are so indelible that the land sinks down below my first impression. I cannot help if you find yourself intimidated by my expressions, and if my mere statue appears foreboding, perhaps it's because I stand on the shoulders of my predecessor's legacy. The truth and conviction of their footsteps resonate through me. I am as ostracized as a Yeti on a, on a slippery slope in society that splits and shifts all around me. I ruffle feathers unintentionally. I think my dimensions are somewhat obtuse angles and uncooperative juxtapositions, not so much elusive or mysterious, but things often appear the way in that way when they are overlooked. 
and or not up for consideration. Viewing things in a rear view mirror requires more concentration, but darkness. Fixate on the darkness. Divergent as crimson red road maps coursing through each of our veins, dark and bold face like the letters that stamp your denial that time is indeed past due. We need change. Fixate on the darkness, dark as pigmented people shaped from grains of the earth's clay skin, whose heavy steps speak volumes of where we are going, of where we have been. Yeah, you can fixate on this darkness. Peace. All right, everyone, I just wanted to make sure everyone got a chance to see Annette Lawrence's work. That was um, Amina's um, second poetry response was to this work. Um, just so you can see it a little bit better. And there's several of these in the exhibition, so please check that out once again. It closes September 9th. Um, so now I just want to say thank you. Thank you all for attending. Thank you to our amazing poets. Um, they're leaving information um, on their personal websites and to get in contact with them in the past. Um, thank you. Just thank you all for making such a wonderful evening. I This is one of few enjoyable evenings I've had for myself for co during this pandemic. Um, so yeah, keep in touch and make sure that uh, you look out for other programs. <laughs>